Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime and the very first video we're making without having an active studio. I do apologize if it's a little airy and echoey. I'm not exactly in the best recording space as we are not able to stay in our home right now in my treated studio for sound. But I'm also using a brand new microphone, so let me know in general how you think this sounds because uh, this is what we'll be using all week. This mic will also be the mic that we end up using uh, for our live streams moving forward, at least the ones where it's just me. Obviously, when we're doing a more full set situation with Eric and putting on a show, we'll be using some higher quality mics. But you know what? This is just to simplify things in my setup. That being said, this video is brought to you by the Toner TC30 USB microphone. It's actually the microphone I'm using right here. Looks pretty cool, huh? Uh, it is a plug and play microphone, requires no drivers to be installed, no special software. It is a really cheap microphone as well at only $30. But as you can hear, because all the audio you're hearing during this segment was recorded by this microphone, it can be actually quite dynamic and quite enriching for such a cheap microphone. The special features of it is that it uses a USB 2.0 data port, so it can plug into basically any normal USB port. There's no additional driver software or external devices required, and it's compatible with Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. It's ideal for gaming podcasts, Zoom meetings, streaming, Skype chatting, voiceover work, etc. So yeah, this is just a really great mic. It's a great starter mic, by the way, if you want to get into podcasting or video calls and heck, even use it with video game consoles. So yeah, why don't you go ahead and check out this Toner TC30 mic through the link down in the description. And I obviously want to give a big shout out to Toner for sponsoring today's video. We have some news to talk about today. Two stories in particular I want to get to. One of them dealing with Atlas. You guys know Atlas, Shin Megami Tensei Five, right? pretty damn good game that released on switch last year they also make a lot of other games persona as an example and we also get to talk about another interesting story that deals with fire emblem and a brand new fire emblem game basically being complete coming from a really legit source now that being said, before I get into this, I gotta remind you, we are giving away a Nintendo Switch OLED, a PlayStation 5, and an Xbox Series X. Now, I will note, uh, since the studio renovation's taking longer than expected, we might be extending the date. Originally, it was gonna be, you can only enter through February 28th, but given that this was all supposed to take place, announcing the winner, everything in the new studio, we might delay this a little bit into March. I do apologize uh, for a delay on announcing the winner. Heck, maybe we even make the giveaway run through March. I have no idea. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Uh, but I'll have an update on that at least before the end of the end of this week. But that being said, go ahead, enter, have fun. We are legitimately giving away a Nintendo Switch, OLED, a PlayStation 5, or an Xbox Series X to one lucky winner. All right, let's get into this stuff. And let's first start with Fire Emblem. So we have a, a rumor coming from Emily Rogers. Now, look, we, we have seen a number of Fire Emblem rumors, uh, multiple games in the works, etc. And obviously, we had one of them confirmed in Fire Emblem Warriors 2 at the last Nintendo Direct. But she's not talking about that. Emily Rogers obviously has a long track record and is one of the longest tenured Nintendo insiders in some time. This isn't someone that we can attribute to just being sourced on Twitter or anywhere else. Emily Rogers legitimately has worked in the industry. So here is what she said over on Fami Boards, which is a Nintendo-focused forum. And she said, a new Fire Emblem game is not only in development at Intelligent Systems, but it's nearly finished with that development and it could come out as early as October. Now, will it be October 2022 or could it be an early 2023 release in February or March? I've mentioned before that this game is nearly finished with this development. Intelligent Systems has had over three plus years to develop this game and they've received assistance from a support studio. That said, Emily Rogers does note uh, that, hey, they already have a really busy release schedule, and so that's why she's saying, hey, this could end up being an early 2023 game instead of a 2022 game like it probably was originally planned to be. So, yeah, this is really cool, you know? Now, she does note, of course, that if you go back and rewind the clock to 2017 during the year Nintendo released two Fire Emblem games in Fire Emblem Warriors and Fire Emblem Echoes, so it says, who says history can't repeat itself again, saying that, hey, you know what, maybe it does come this year. Now, look... Obviously, we don't know anything about this game and when it's coming up. Emily Rogers might know a bit more than what she's letting on right now. Maybe she'll talk about it more later this year, after, you know, if it gets unveiled this year. Obviously, I would presume if it is an early 2023 game, it would be unveiled, say, at the September Nintendo Direct. If it is going to come out this year, period, I would assume it's unveiled 
at a summer Nintendo Direct, maybe during an E3 event if there is one. So there's a lot of unknowns here. But what I will say is that I'm just excited in general for more Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem Three Houses, I'm, I, I don't know if I'm going to go as far as to say it's my favorite Fire Emblem game, but it's up there. It's really up there. I, it's close, which is interesting because a lot of people sometimes think that Switch maybe lacks some of the creativity in these IPs that they bring out that keep selling so well, but I find myself enjoying, you know, you know, my favorite Mario game right now is Super Mario Odyssey. Breath of the Wild is my favorite Zelda game. Xenoblade Chronicles X is probably still my favorite Xenoblade game, so that's, you know, neither here nor there. But the point is that this is just really, really cool, and I'm excited for it. Now, this other story is sort of a weird one, because it's more of a, should we be mad? I, I, I'm not really sure how to treat this. Atlas. Okay, you guys know Atlas. Uh, they unveiled a brand new game. Uh, on Twitter, it says, In a war between devil summoners, it's up to Ringo and her team to decrypt destiny and save the world from the apocalypse. Soul Hackers 2 releases August 26, 2022 for PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, Xbox Series X and S, and Steam. And no, it's not on Nintendo Switch. So it's announced for essentially every major platform except Nintendo Switch. And what's weird about that, of course, is that, hey, Atlas, you know, has openly said they are going to be putting more games on Switch. Uh, and then they announce a new game that's not on Switch. And two, if you're watching this little video footage they gave out, it's not very long, and we'll put it on repeat a bit. It doesn't look like it's that graphically intense. It doesn't look like it's something that we haven't seen on Switch before. You, you can argue even Shin Megami Tensei Five looks more intense than this. And yeah, there's performance issues with that game, but it looks more intense than this game does. This game looks a lot more like, I don't know, Tokyo Mirage Sessions, which was a Wii U title ported over to Switch and obviously runs quite well on Switch. So it's a little interesting to see that they decided that this game isn't something to bring over now, at least at launch. Maybe it gets a late port in 2023 or something, but why wouldn't it be there at launch? Nintendo owns Japan. It would obviously probably quickly become the second best-selling platform for it. Like, yeah, okay, maybe PlayStation 4 and 5 end up being the lead platform in sales, but Switch could easily come in there at number two ahead of PC and Xbox. Now, granted, I am really happy that Xbox is getting the game at all because, hey, you know what? They don't really get Atlas game basically ever. At least Nintendo fans, we do get Atlas games sometimes. So it's, it's nice to see Xbox get the game. I, I think that's good. It's a multi-platform game. I think it should be on everything. It just feels a little weird that it's not on Switch. And we're not the only ones noticing this. You know, our good buddy Jake Randall pointed it out. Another good friend of ours, Stealth uh, 40K out there, said, yeah, you know, why isn't this on Switch? It feels like a really big missed sales opportunity. Um, I, I do want to dispel some of the notions because some people uh, are, are put out there that, oh, it's not on Switch because Switch can't handle it. Again, we've seen games better looking than this on Switch, so I, I don't really think it's a performance issue. It could just simply be, hey, we are deciding we don't want to do this. I, I don't know. This is just, it, it, it's baffling to me, I guess is the way to put this. I don't think there's really a good reason from Atlas uh, if they were interviewed to say, hey, yeah, this is why we're not putting it on Switch, I don't think they're even going to address it. Atlas is known for making a lot of weird platform choices. Like, why don't we have a full-blown Persona game on Switch, but we get a bunch of spinoffs on Switch? Well, some of that might have to do with exclusivity contracts with Sony because it's not on Xbox either. So we're not really sure how that situation plays out. Uh, just like Shin Megami Tensei 5. Yeah, it's only on Switch. It's not on other platforms. Why is that? Well, because essentially Shin Megami Tensei has practically always been a Nintendo Switch or a Nintendo exclusive IP. I don't know that Nintendo owns rights to it because Shin Megami Tensei 3 was multi-platform. However, Atlas is known to put Shin Megami Tensei games only on Nintendo platforms for a majority of that franchise's life. So maybe this is just the case of Persona where it's just, hey, look, maybe Sony doesn't own exclusivity to it, but that's an IP that we primarily focus on Sony with. And maybe we'll bring spinoffs elsewhere, which they obviously have done. So I don't know. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I care a ton about this individual game. Atlas games in general aren't the kind of games I enjoy. Get mad at me for not being super into all the JRPGs out there and still liking Xenoblade. I get it. This isn't me knocking Atlas. This isn't me saying that Soul Hackers 2 isn't going to be good. In fact, some people are actually noting that they're a little concerned because it doesn't look... It looks like the people who made Soul Hackers 2 maybe didn't play the original Soul Hackers because it looks like the gameplay supposedly is fundamentally different than the first game. But 
I'm, I can't even go into those kind of details because I didn't play the first game. I don't even know what this IP is. I don't know anything about it. It's kind of like the Persona franchise. I know how the Persona franchise got started. Technically, it was a spinoff from Shin Megami Tensei. But I, to be honest, I don't know much about Shin Megami Tensei either because I don't play these games. And maybe I'm missing out. And I think right now, at the point I am in my life, my mid-30s, it's pretty hard for me to dive deep into these IPs at this point. Not that I won't enjoy them, but that, hey, I've got a lot of other stuff going on, both at my YouTube channel and other games I got to play and my kids and everything else. So, you know, timing-wise, this looks like a, like stuff I should have probably forced myself to get into more as kids. You know, I played a lot of Golden Sun, played Chrono Cross, Chrono Trigger, played Final Fantasy, played a lot of stuff like that, you know, the Secret of Mana series, you know, Children of Mana, etc. So I, I played a lot of of jrpg kind of stuff when i was younger and those are the ips that still to this day that i would say i still have interest in never really got into the atlas stuff that much that's on me so again i think that this does it, this is a bummer this is a bummer for switch owners and it's a bummer especially for those in japan personally i own multiple platforms so it's not like if you know if i really want to play this in august i can I got an, an idea that I'll probably be too busy still playing Splatoon 3 or something, but um, that's neither here nor there. Everyone's got their own preference in games and what they're going to spend their time on. This is a tough year because there's so many good games. We just had Horizon Forbidden West come out. We you know we got two big games from Nintendo next month. Microsoft's going to have their thing. Um, they're going to be dealing in third-party, multi-plat, and Sony, and everyone's bringing goods this year. 2022 is a massive year for gaming, and it's going to be crazy to see What's up for Game of the Year? Like, it's Horizon Forbidden West up for Game of the Year again, going head to head with Breath of the Wild, going head to head with Elden Ring, going head to head with, you know, you know that that uh, space game coming from Microsoft and Bethesda or, I, or what Starlight or whatever. I'm forgetting the name. I'm, I really apologize for forgetting the name. Maybe it's just because I haven't been that impressed by what we've seen by the game so far, because it's kind of weird. I'm still trying to figure out what that game is. Like, it could just be No Man's Sky at this point, and I wouldn't even know. So, by the way, No Man's Sky on Switch, crazy. I know off topic anyways guys thank you so much for tuning in hopefully this video turns out all right uh, a lot of voiceover gameplay coming this week uh, but thank you guys for watching and i'll catch you in the next video